The entire philosophy of Fishing Hamlet and Bloodborne was firmly conceived by the novel published in 1931 by H.P. Lovecraft titled Shadow Over Innsmouth. There are several uncanny similarities making it feel almost like an adaptation. Even the sun in Fishing Hamlet has a shadow, alluding to a shadow over Fishing Hamlet. Perhaps by explaining and analyzing the events of the novel we can further understand Fishing Hamlet and exactly why it was so regarded as a secret in the lore of the game. The small seaport town of Innsmouth is known very much for being nearly deserted and getting by with its abundant fishing grounds. An uncanny amount of fish seemed to swarm to that region and that region alone. Its rumored history of abnormality keeps the neighboring towns tight-lipped making it fairly obscure. The protagonist, Robert Olmsted, listened fervently to gossip from a man named Casey at the bus station, which only piqued his interest with words of demons seen darting in and out of tunnels burrowed out within caves, and sailors making detours to avoid a reef, aptly named Devil's Reef, out of superstition. Though, some ships never made it out of the coast of the town. Casey goes on to say that the fishermen there have narrow heads with flat noses, rough and scabby skin. All of this possibly due to a degenerative disease that plagued the town, or even devil warship, which may have started with a captain named Obed Marsh. Casey ends with a fair warning. The villagers are unspoken and not keen to foreigners. They are lawless and sly full of secret doings, and that it's best to not go out at night. That allure of the unknown is what spiked interest in Robert to make a very short stay there while he awaited his transfer bus back out. It was almost as if something unseen was beckoning him there. Once Robert arrives at Innsmouth, he encounters a youth at a local grocery store who was instantly drawn to him as the youth was to any outsider. He did not possess the look of the other residents and actually lived in the next town over. Like Robert, he was repulsed by everything about the town. The fishy smell and the awkward shambling residents who sometimes seem more like animals. The natives were usually drunk and sometimes heard chanting, their voices very unpleasant. He said that it's best to talk to Zadok Allen, a normal looking 96 year old homeless drunkard of the town, considering he's more seasoned on the natives culture. But he warned it's best to not be seen talking to him in public. Robert decides to take a little tour of his own, and after crossing a bridge on his way out to the coast, noticed many buildings looking condemned and abandoned, covered in barnacles. Some buildings had caved-in roofs, others boarded up, while others leaned, having sank into their foundations. The town was mostly in ruin, but when he neared the boarded-up buildings, he heard unsettling and unexplainable sounds from within. Besides that, it was eerily quiet, and the streets were vacant. Even at three in the afternoon, he couldn't even hear a dog's bark. As Robert's insecurity started to grow, becoming anxious, he turned around and rushed back to the main square. When signs of life re-emerged, he spotted Zadok, and suddenly his curiosity got the better of him, so he decided to engage Zadok discreetly. After hours of drunken banter, Zadok started to go into exactly what happened in the town starting from his very youth. During Captain Obed Marsh's trading, he encountered some strange natives on an island covered in jewelry and charms. He learned that they had given up human sacrifices to amphibious frogfish monsters in return for fish and gold. The natives and monsters interbred, producing children who appeared human at first, then progressively changed to look more like the monsters. The natives of the island underwent a gradual change until they reached the age of 70, where they evolved into fish-like mermaids to which they dove into the sea, gaining immortal life through blood heritage, originating from some higher deity. One villager gave Obed a ritual material and taught him a lot of incantations and prayers on how to summon the evolved fish creatures for gold and more fish. Not long after, the natives of the island took to the water or died off, and the sea level rose to obscure the island, becoming a reef. This killed Obed's trade and thereby killed the town's economy. Due to the town's devout Christianity, Obed's solutions to the matter weren't favorable, and against the town's beliefs, Obed rode out to the sunken island time and time again with human sacrifices, dropping them into the water and chanting rituals, which beckoned the fish and gold. Over time, this brought the town out of a recession. Obed was desperate, and praying to God wasn't bringing him any results, but he had no intention of turning the town into what became of the island. 
When too many people started disappearing and the population dwindled, Obed was accused and thrown into jail, unable to continue with his sacrifices. Weeks later, hordes of sea monsters rose from the sea and pillaged the village, taking many lives with them, including Zadok's own father. They didn't have the charms the Devil Island residents had to ward off the sea creature's wrath. From then on, Obed became a priest of the church, the Order of Dagon, and bestowed three oaths upon the rest of the village. One, to become a member of the church. Two, to prevent this occurrence from ever happening again and continuing with the sacrifices. And three, interbreeding with the sea creatures, which Zadok would rather die than do. As Zadok's story started to die down a little, the tide began to shudder and clash. Then he very ominously alluded to something far greater, more sinister than the frogfish monsters themselves, and in a maniacal fear gasped, Ever hear tell of a Shoggoth? Abruptly, he shouted that they were on to him, and told Robert to leave town and never come back. They parted ways. Robert didn't know what to make of Zadok's mad and drunken tale, but as the story goes on, he starts to see that Zadok was only made mad by living through the ordeal. Robert's trip out of town was postponed due to the bus having engine trouble, so he unfortunately had to take temporary residence in a drawl room with no running water and signs of the locks having been forcibly removed. As dusk drew to nighttime, his paranoia kept him awake, and good thing it did because the residents were after him. He made a run for it, dropping from a window to a roof, then to the ground below. He kept running, keeping out of sight, not keeping an eye off his pursuers, the hybrid Innsmouth people. While cleverly staying hidden and out of sight, he noticed a wave of creatures arising from the water, croaking and with dark green skin, hopping like frogs with fish heads, gills, and webbed claws. He found a good hiding spot and they passed him without notice, but through the ordeal he fainted for the first time in his life. After he awoke under the morning sun and got the hell out of town, he told his story to government officials. They soon carried out an investigation which resulted in the arrest of any hybrid survivors of the cult. They were locked away in concentration camps. Then the town was burned and bombed to the ground, leaving the town nearly deserted. What experiments conducted on these individuals is unclear in the story, but what is clear in Bloodborne is that the first hunters invaded Fishing Hamlet and clearly violated the residents there, digging holes into their heads as if forcibly searching for eyes as evident in the item description for the accursed brew, and the cloaked figures that spew curses are likely as a result. These experiments were likely done to gain the insight and powers bestowed upon the residents of the hamlet by a higher deity. The Order of Dagon in the time of Innsmouth were worshipping a formless deity known as Shagoth, who created, governs, and resides in the sunken underwater city named Yainthle, which teems with other aquatic creature life. Like Lovecraft lore, in case you didn't notice, there is an actual underwater city in the Sea of Fishing Hamlet. This was no accident, as they were alluding to Yainthle. Shoggoth is somewhat similar to Kaz, who was found by its residents washed up on the coast filled with parasites that fed off of Kaz's power. Kaz was an aquatic great one as well, worshipped by the residents of Fishing Hamlet, and there was likely interbreeding resulting in the human-like mermaids, as in the case with the story of Innsmouth. The novella hints at the government torpedoing the underwater city and leaving it damaged, but not destroyed, nor did it awaken the slumbering Cthulhu. But Lovecraft never wrote about this specific underwater city ever again, as there were deeper, larger, and more meaningful ones, like Relay. Like the government in the story of Innsmouth, in Bloodborne, the first hunters violated Fishing Hamlet and killed Kaz, who eventually washed up on the coast. This was corroborated in the latest guide on the old hunters by Future Press. About the Fishing Hamlet priest, it states, A priest of the Fishing Hamlet and survivor of a raid by the hunters long ago. The raid left many of the Hamlet's residents and their guardian great one Kaz dead. And as we know, Epic Name Bro was involved with the creation of it. And because they really want to protect kind of the integrity of the game's story, they, they want you to make your own ideas. They want you to have your own speculation. He really wants to respect the integrity of the game's story, respect the community and kind of this kind of communal sense of speculation and discovery and exploration. But now that you know the gist of the story of Shadow Over Innsmouth by Lovecraft, you should see many parallels to the fishing hamlet.
and why it was so regarded as a secret by the first hunters. I didn't go into the last chapter of the novel as it focuses on the main character, so I advise you read the story for yourself if you'd like to know more. To better understand Bloodborne, it really helps to know more about what inspired it, and H.B. Lovecraft's work is a good place to start. If you like this video, show your support and subscribe and or patronize me. I, I mean in a good way, like with financial support. Like what these fabulous people are doing. Bless their hearts. You're welcome to watch my previous videos, even the one on the doll, should it please you. But y'all better be careful, cause Hulu's gonna get ya. Cthulhu's gonna get ya. That's Hulu's gonna get you, Lou.